From genre blending deck builders to classic pixel dungeon crawlers, here are the 10 best roguelite games to play in 2019. Gandalf was probably talking about games when he said death isn't the end, but just another path. And in the case of the games on this list, that path usually leads you right back around to the beginning so you can start again and die in new and exciting ways. And that's a long-winded way of saying this video is all about roguelites, games that have some elements of the classically punishing subgenre of game, things like permadeath and procedurally generated levels, but with scale, difficulty and unexpected twists, hence the light. So you'll find plenty to enjoy here if your favourite game is Dwarf Fortress, but there's variety and invention here too. And if you are new here, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you know when our next video lands. Get ready for the grey rain curtain of the world to roll back. Here in no particular order are the 10 best roguelites to play on PC in 2019. And a hero never knows what is awaiting them at the end of a road. Children of Mortar is a co-op roguelite meets familial soap opera. Think days of our lives with corruption, magic and massive spiders. In it, you play as members of the Bergson family as they take repeated turns to cleanse dungeons accessible from the basement of their impressive home. It's a cool idea. Over time, new members of the family will become available to use and there's even a drunk, grumpy old granddad on hand to buff your weapons. On top of this, it's one of the few roguelike games with a structured and engaging story. Between missions, you'll find out more about the Bergsons and their motivations. It makes the pace slightly more sedate than the frenetic, die and jump back in gameplay of some of the other games in this video, but it does give the world depth. And it's also beautiful, the sort of pixel art masterpiece where every screen looks like it could be framed. OK, maybe not that one. The Bergson began to slip away, wondering if this was death. Playing roguelike games is a tacit acceptance of the fact that you're going to die, but Black Future 88 takes this to a whole new level. This energetic 2D shooter in beta at the moment, but due for release in 2019, gives you just 18 minutes to scale a tower before your heart explodes. And as if dying isn't bad enough, the tower itself, called Skymelt, is determined to defeat you. Anything you don't pick up will be absorbed by the building and turned against you. And you'll have plenty of choice too because the game features a strong selection of imaginative weapons, including one that lets you reverse places with anything that you shoot and a sword that lets you slice up projectiles. On top of all this, it looks and sounds amazing. It takes place in an alternate version of a neon-lit 1980s with an incredible pulsing synth soundtrack and a series of crisply designed bosses called Wardens. Because yes, you're going to die, they're going to die, we're all going to die, but at least we'll look good doing it. This simple looking top down adventure might look predictable, but honestly, it is anything but. Even the character select screen is surprising. Yes, you could be a soldier or a scientist, but why would you do that when you could be a literal gorilla? Streets of Rogue is a game crammed with wild, emergent ideas, but it rarely feels overcomplicated. And despite how immediate it feels, perhaps the best thing about it is how many options you have when it comes to solving problems. Trying to get past that locked door? You can pick the lock, blow the door up, or with the right pharmaceuticals, inflate yourselves to absurd levels of hugeness and smash down the door and the walls that surround it. It's like Alice in Wonderland meets Heat. And if all that isn't enough to sell you on the idea, hit the link in the description to try the free version on itch.io. It's exactly the sort of teaser that'll make you crave the full game. Many of the games in this video take place in a 2D environment or use a specific gameplay twist to slow things down. The excellent Risk of Rain 2, however, is the most ballistically energised game on this list. The sequel to the excellent original lets you and up to four friends try and escape a world full of endlessly spawning monsters and gradually increasing difficulty. Wait long enough and the creatures that were once bosses become standard mobs. To combat this, you unlock inventive, powerful items as you play by earning enough cash to buy buffs and power-ups that will tip the odds in your favour. The result is a twitchy, fast-paced third-person shooter that recalls the best bits of playing a Battle Royale game with less of the frustration. It's incredible when you're tooled up enough to feel invincible and wonderfully disappointing when the game proves you're not. Alright, we'll have one more go. 
One of the beauties of doing a rogue light list is that we can include all sorts of games that stretch definitions and provide inventive, encouraging takes on a sometimes brutal genre. And Slay the Spire is a great example of a game that takes some roguelike elements, random levels, punishing combat and permadeath, then mixes them flawlessly with deck building mechanics. The result is a game that feels different every time that's constructed so well that you'll learn to love it even if the thought of Gwent or Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering has you breaking out in hives. Because yes, it is all about cards, but the interplay between abilities and the crystal clear way it's explained makes Slay the Spire a uniquely thrilling experience. If you want a roguelike game that gives you time to stop and consider your actions, but also makes you feel like a strategic mastermind, Slay the Spire is the sort of title you can lose days and weeks to. Bonus points for having one of the most satisfying lightning animations in all of games. Look at that. The fact this is a rogue light list might put some people off, but if you've lasted this far into the video, let's be absolutely clear. Whatever types of game you like, you should try Dead Cells. And that's partly because it's a mix of so many revered genres. This 2D platformer has strong Metroidvania elements and combat that reflects the pixel-perfect, parry and riposte conflict of Dark Souls. And in case you hadn't noticed, it's visually impeccable, literally dripping with pixel art that makes all the other indie games look like fire-damaged Lego. The seductive animations and brilliant character design make for the sort of grimy, bleak, low-fantasy world that you wish would get made into a TV show. But the most important thing is how it feels to play, and Dead Cells feels incredible. Pacey, fluid, and with a real sense of variety and impact of the weapons, this is an endlessly repeatable undead dream. We love a bit of Moonlighter here, which is why we featured it in a couple of previous videos, and with good reason. It has the dungeon-delving elements of Stardew polished to dangerous levels of sharpness, combined with a shopkeeping angle that will make you rethink how you look at retail. These two things combined provide an endlessly compelling gameplay loop. Everything you sell has a story behind it, usually one of you risking everything to stock your shelves, even if your customers don't quite appreciate it. And perhaps because of this, even pricing up your goods is exciting. Of course, none of this would be enticing unless the actual act of grabbing loot was enjoyable, and the good news, as you can almost certainly tell, is that Moonlighter feels great to play. Stylish and challenging, with an emphasis on mastering your weapons, timing and environments. Throw in some solid upgrade mechanics and the chance to get to know your neighbours in the commercial hamlet of Renoka, and you have an action RPG that masterfully straddles commerce and combat. Somebody should spare a thought for the humble dice, always there for us in the background being thrown about and used to make our lives more exciting. But when will dice get to start in their own game? Well, apparently it's now. Dicey Dungeons is another deck-building roguelite, this time from Terry Kavanagh, creator of Super Hexagon and the letter V six times. You guide different classes of multi-sided heroes through procedurally generated dungeons at the whims of game show host Lady Luck. Think of it like The Running Man meets Craps. And the variety of enemies just adds to the element of the unknown. One moment you're fighting against pirates, the next against a baby squid, all rendered to perfection by artist Marlo Dobb. But maybe the best thing about Dicey Dungeons is the way the combat works. You have to slot your moves into a pleasing rectangle, then perform them depending on the nature of your dice rolls. It doesn't sound exciting, but trust me when I say there are few things in games more satisfying than rolling all the numbers you need. Mm, look at that. Ooh. Like many of the other games on this list, Void Bastards isn't content by being influenced by one game alone. Not a chance. Instead, it mixes elements of Bioshock, System Shock 2 and FDL into a strategic shooter that should be a confusing morass, but somehow ends up being brilliant. The plan is to lead a ragtag bunch of intergalactic misfits out of the Sargasso Nebula. And if that sounds perilous, it's because it absolutely is. But the good news is that life in Void Bastards is cheap, and you have an endless supply of prisoners to use, each with their own skills and traits, as you navigate the game's 15-hour campaign. And even though it should be staggeringly obvious from the footage, 
Void Bastards looks incredible. The sort of bold, cel-shaded feast for the eyes that doesn't seem real until you've seen it in motion. Love it. Sunless Skies, as you may have guessed, is the aeronautical sequel to The Incredible Sunless Seas. In it, you take over as the captain of a locomotive built for off-rails travel, chugging through the stars as you try and keep your crew sane and your pockets full. And like its predecessor, the thing that keeps Sunless Skies interesting is the story. Every new game is like a rich, emergent gothic fairy tale, full of narrative devices that somehow interlock and create something new. Every mission, every discovery and every new officer you recruit all contribute to the greater whole, and that somehow makes it more palatable when you die and start again, because yes, you've lost progress, but at the same time it crystallises the experience of your expired captain. If you want a roguelike game that blends exploration and incredible writing into one of the most imaginative worlds in gaming, board Sunless Skies with haste. Just, you know, don't ask where you're going. And there you go, pop back to the start of the video and watch it again for the full roguelike experience, or you know, just give this video a like if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when our next video lands.